Hi there, welcome back. So you want to know something about CVA and DVA. I can tell you that this is not a simple topic because it involves non-trivial concepts as the one of risk-neutral measure. However, I will try to make it clear. Look at this coin. This coin has two sides and CVA and DVA are two sides of the same coin. This coin for us represents a derivative, a portfolio of derivatives characterized by counterparty credit risk. Counterparty credit risk is the risk arising from the possibility that the counterparty may default on amounts owned on a transaction. In simple terms, it is the risk that my counterparty will default before the expiration of its contractual obligations. Just a special type of credit risk. Assume I buy some five-year bonds issued by company A. If company A defaults before maturity, I will lose money, as I will not be able to get my capital back. When dealing with CDS, we have seen a simple way of hedging counterparty credit risk. Credit valuation adjustment, or CVA, is nothing more than the market value of counterparty credit risk from the point of view of the buyer. It has become very relevant after Basel III. Banks are now required to compute CVA. Heuristically, CVA is the price of default risk for a derivative or a portfolio of derivatives. When dealing with a security, it can be quantified as the difference between the risk-neutral value and the true value, that is the value taking into account the possibility of the counterparty default. In a sense, it measures the difference between theory and practice. In most pricing formulas, in fact, default is not taken into account. CVA corrects for these. The risk-neutral value of a security is the theoretical value we can compute under the risk-neutral measure. In financial mathematics, we speak of risk neutrality if a probability measure is such that the today's value of each security is nothing more than the discounted expected value of the same security at maturity. Remember that, in most cases, for us, the value of a security on the market is a random variable. That's why we need the expected value. The computation of CVA is not at all simple. It involves cumbersome mathematical formulas and a lot of computer simulations. Billions of simulations. Debit valuation adjustment is the other side of the coin representing counterparty credit risk. It represents counterparty credit risk from the point of view of the seller, which takes into account its own default and the impact of this on the value of the transaction. DVA is a highly controversial measure and regulators are very suspicious about its use by banks. The computation of DVA essentially mirrors the one of CVA. In absolute terms, DVA equals CVA. Again, the two sides of the same coin. Given the true value of a derivative, if we remove CVA and DVA, what remains is the risk-neutral value. DVA is controversial because it may allow banks to have paper profits on their books. Let's consider a simple example. A issues bonds and B buys them. If the PD of A increases, the value of its bonds decreases. We know this. This is naturally reflected by the increase of CVA for B so that CVA for B is a cost. But for A, default may not be a negative event if we just focus our attention on the single transaction and not on A as a whole. In fact, in case of default, A is no longer supposed to make any payment to B. This is a virtual gain for A, 
and this is why DVA increases when PD and credit spreads increase. Taking into consideration its own default, A creates virtual profits. It looks like a very theoretical situation, but before the crisis many banks actually abused of DVA, inflating their profits. On the course platform you can find some interesting readings. Goodbye!